guys, it's Vic here, and I spent five, six hours in a stuffy theater yesterday because I was working through a pretty interesting audition and I had to perform a monologue, do some cold reading, sit around a lot. Figured I've done my fair share of auditions, so I would share a few things I found in common. So I here are some audition struggles. Okay, so first thing to worry about isn't even the audition. There's the prep. Now, usually the prep is like prepare like a 60 to 90 second monologue before me. I'm the idiot that decided, you know what, I want to put props in and kind of a costume. And I'm just like, why do I do this to myself? Because, well, that's all well and good to say, oh, hey, I am so invested. I'm going to take the time to do this. I'm in high school. I'm busy. <laughs> this was screwing me over because I suddenly had to figure out how am I doing this? How am I doing this and this and this and this? Because now I don't even have, I have to worry about not only not panic for getting my lines, but I have to remember not dropping a prop, not letting those props smother me, and finding a good jacket for it because I was holding all my props in my jacket. Let me just elaborate on quite what I did. I did a Mad Hatter monologue because it's an it was an Alice in Wonderland audition. And so I had a watch, I had a spoon, I had a little thing, lotion, I had a rock, and I had a Ziploc bag with a paper towel folded up inside with liverwurst written across it. I had a jacket and a pair of jeans on. And so I had to hide things in my pockets so that one, they weren't seen, two, they wouldn't fall, and three, I could get them out of my pocket without effing up. And how am I supposed to figure, oh, and then what's worse for me is because I was going to borrow a friend's jacket because it was like perfect, and he's like, yeah, I'll bring it for you. And then he forgot, and then he forgot, and then he forgot. And finally, the day before my audition, he goes, yeah, I'm not going to be able to bring it. So I had to panic, find a new jacket, find new hiding places for all my props, and rerun my entire monologue the night before my show, or audition thing. And I'm just like, this lighting is doing it for me today. Like, look at me. I look adorable. I love this. <laughs> but like, huh. So much stress, and I haven't even gotten to the audition yet. This isn't even the day of. This is before. This is weeks before. This isn't even the day of getting to... And I'm not even there yet. Oh, my God. All right. Now we're on the day of the audition. It's like getting ready to go. So I'm just like, all right. So I showered the night before, cleaned my body. Clean, 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 clean. Till I'm super clean. <laughs> um... And then the morning of, I went ahead and I washed my hair really thoroughly, made sure it was all wet. And what I did is I found a new way to do my hair. And so that basically, I flip it all over this way and look like a boy because, oh my God, I do the floop, floop. And I mean, it literally, and then I have a little bit of hands just, and so I do it that way so I can like layer by layer straighten my hair because otherwise I look like a hobbit and I ain't looking like that one day or taking my picture first thing in the morning. And so I'm just like, all right, so I do all this, and then I find myself the clothes I need, so I find the jeans that I was wearing, I would find the, a good shirt for it. I wore a black shirt because I'm like, being as nondescript as I can, but then I'm wearing this jacket, and it's like this na navy blue jacket, and it's got like green and purple swirlies, and it was perfect for Mad Hatter, and it had the pockets I wanted, and so I was okay with it, but it made me look like a tired college student. <laughs> That is a legitimate comment that I heard from a lot of parents there because this was an audition where five to eight, like five years old to 18 years old could go. It was mostly under 12 and then there was me and like three other kids that were above like 14. I'm just like, oops. <laughs> but like a lot of parents said, I look like a tired college student. So I'm like, oh, okay, oops. <laughs> But anyways, so I've gotten ready. I'm not wearing my bracelets. I'm wearing like a tiny, not really visible pair of earrings. I just put so much thought into this. And I'm just like, yeah, I have to be as nondescript as possible. Then I get there, and you can tell who's auditioning for Alice because you see all these little girls with blonde hair, the black headband, and these costumes. Now I get that they're children, and they don't necessarily know what you're supposed to wear to an audition. But come on, costumes? Like, even people who are dressing up for the White Rabbit had that stuff going on. I'm just like, costumes? And if you weren't wearing costumes, there was one kid there. She was like 12, I think. She was wearing an Alice in Wonderland dress. And I'm just like, like not like not like the actual Alice dress. Like, just a dress that had like an Alice in Wonderland design on it. And I'm just like... 
Whereas I'm sitting here over in my black jeans, my Vans, my annoying black shirt, and my baggy jacket looking like this. Then, hmm, part of the processing at the place I went to was they give you your number so that you can call, be, pull, go up there when they call your number. But then they take a picture of you for like reference during the casting. Oh my god, I was so tired. I blanked all four times that they took the picture. I had this beautiful smile and I looked great, but I blanked every time. So I looked like this. <laughs> oh, now I don't want to open my eyes. <sighs> Can I just do the video like the No! I have to be awake. <laughs> So I blinked, uh, I was just stressful. And we got, we weren't quite sure where it was and the theater was not where I thought it would be. And it wasn't quite how I thought it would be, but I'll get to that in a minute. Actually, I wanna elaborate on this picture thing. So besides the fact that I blinked, I made a weird noise. Besides the fact that I blinked, the standards for this picture, what? Okay. I would not, usually I am okay when people take my picture like that because I'm just like, it's a theater thing. You're supposed to be used to it. But one, it was nine in the morning. Two, it was a Saturday. So I'm just like, ugh. And so my problem is they need, they want me to look presentable. They, they literally said in their little audition requirements, be come in looking ready for a picture. I probably went the wrong, whatever. Okay, come in looking ready for a picture. And I'm just like, lady, it's nine in the morning. I probably just rolled out of bed, nervous sweat all the way there in my car, have a full face of acne from a full week of school, and why? I understand like Adina Menzel, Miley Cyrus. Hey, Miley Cyrus, they all look perfect all the time because like they're naturally like great and they're really good at pulling good faces for things. I'm 15. Real, I just, see? I'm 15, I drool on myself when I yell. But to be fair, I understand why they want that picture, it, it's fit. But still, just let me bring in my own headshot. I guarantee my fluorescent lighting is gonna be the same as yours and I'm not gonna get any tanner between my selfie session and your audition. Plus I could probably find my angle so you can get the best picture of me you need. So cause I can like flex my jawline, just like, See, I can take a picture here. This natural lighting is doing it for me. I can do my selfie here. Walk into your audition with this kick-ass picture. Maybe not with a hat this big. I just realized how big this is. Like, whoa! <laughs> but just like, let me take my selfie, bring it to you. There you go. You have the best picture of me you can get. None of the work for you. All the stuff for me. I look good. You have a picture. Hmm. Okay, now the audition itself was a lot, it was structured differently than I thought. Because they gave me the number thing, which I've never had done before. I've never had just like a, oh, this is the order you came in from, like coming into the building because you came on time, unlike everyone else. Here you go, you're number nine. 67 children were auditioning, I was number nine. I had to sit through every single monologue. I couldn't leave, I couldn't go get my food. Food is a separate story here. <sighs> okay. But anyway, so I'm sitting through all these monologues, and my only, only one, it was that the judges did take quite a while, in my opinion, to write down their stuff between monologues, because they didn't start to write anything till way after people were done. Ugh, my hair's just like, I was gonna make it look like I wasn't bald, but like, enjoy my baldness. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah! Oh, so they didn't start till after, and so that took a little longer than I thought it should, in my opinion, but like, that's just me, and I'm like, impatient, so that fits. Um, but it was also that all the little girls that were wearing those Alice dresses, or just all the little girls, every little girl, every other one, did the same Alice monologue. I'm not kidding. I heard it about 12 times. I haven't memorized at this point. I'm just like, ugh. I'm just like, uh, 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 huh. I'm just like, mm. and I understand they're children. They don't really have that many options that they can like memorize and do stuff with. And I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I'm still annoying. <sighs> this has been a learning experience. I'm probably not made for children's shows. But anyway, um, so after we do that, we have a 10 to 15 minute break uh, for them to figure out who they want to cold read with who, like who with who and stuff. And they told us that, but then they just went in numerical order. And I'm just like, ah. 
Like, they literally went one, two, three, four. They called it up and they made us go up there just in numerical order. I'm just like, well, okay then. Um, so we did a cold read. I read once. I got the read from March Hare. And I'm like, okay, that, eh, it's not the part I want, but I'll live. Um, so fast forward through all the cold reading, they go, okay, hang around for another 10 minutes. We can decide if we want to keep you or not. And so, uh, I'm starving because they were supposed to give us a lunch break and no one ever got, we never really got a lunch break. So I haven't eaten since like eight in the morning at this point. It's nearly two o'clock. I'm starving. My mother is in the car outside with my McDonald's and I'm like, give me my fast food. I need my calories. And so I'm just like waiting for 10 minutes like, because <sighs> the building was 12 degrees. The bathroom was scary. I'm not even going to talk about it. And I'm starving. I'm cold. I'm tired. I'm bored. Then they finally come out and go, quiet, quiet. Everyone sit down. We got already like, okay, what are we doing next? You're free to go. I fled. I fled. I ran straight out to the car. I inhaled all my french fries on the way home. Then inhaled my Big Mac. No shame. Shame? Shame? No, no, no. Shame has left the building. Shame has never lived here. Now, my monologue itself was actually pretty good. Like, I did really well. I didn't... No props effed up. Lines were all good. And everyone loved it. Like, I got, I got like, standing applause from all the kids and the adults. Everyone was laughing. I got compliments throughout the entire day from parents and stuff saying, Oh my god, you did so good. That was so well done. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. And this actually originally put in my head, I'm probably not going to get a part because in the most modest way possible, there were the 15 year olds in company who were there. You could tell we had stronger acting ability than some of the children and that it's not even just because we're more talented, it's we've had more practice. We've been doing this since they were in diapers, some of us. So it's just like, we had more practice. We were stronger at it because we were just, we knew what to do. And so I originally thought, no, none of us are going to really get in because it's like they don't want to have the kids overshadowed once the kids show. And some parents are going to hate if their kid is overshadowed by dun, da, 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 teenagers. And so that was my original thought. So I'm just like, okay, I'll view this as a learning experience because I figured I wasn't going to get a part. Um, and I'm okay. Notice, keyword, figured. Hey, hey, that comes at the end of the video. Um... So I'm just like, okay, but the monologue was really good. I was nervous, which I always view being nervous as a good thing, because one, that is an entire well of energy that I can use. If I wasn't nervous, I'd be tired. If I was tired, I wouldn't have the energy to do such a manic monologue that I had to do. But I had the energy that I could draw out of and do stuff with. That is how I view my nerves. I view it as like this, I view it as one of those energy drinks that I could just, <laughs> Can I just do that a couple more times? <laughs> oh, I'm too tired for this. But yeah, so I was nervous. I was good. And being nervous is usually a good thing for me because the more nervous I am, the better I typically do with a monologue, which, um, in my head makes, in my head, the director's like, Jolly G Darn Molly meh this kid is good let's cast him and i'm just like molly G what see brain cells they're all gone nope out the window along with the shade they go oh, my hand is fading off into like heaven Ooh. <laughs> but i did get a part i did not get mad hatter i did not get march hair i'm the queen of hearts <laughs> I'm just, I'm the queen of hearts. <laughs> My mother was tickled with this because back in 2010, I dressed up as Alice in Zombieland, so I was a zombie version of Alice, but my mom dressed up as the queen of hearts for Halloween. And now I'm going to be queen of hearts, and she is very excited about this. My dad's excited. I'm excited. It's a good role. I like the role. I just, I'm surprised because none of my, nothing I did in my audition and to me said Queen of Hearts, but I guess it did to them. I just, I'm, I'm, I accepted the role. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go through with it. And I am not the most excited about doing a children's show. If only because, uh, I know for a fact I have no patience and dealing with children is going to be something very difficult for me, but I'm also going to view it as a learning experience and a good opportunity because uh, Queen of Hearts is a leading role and having that on my resume will look great. So I'm viewing it as a learning experience, an opportunity, and basically a free chance to act. 
So I'm excited, and I hope everyone else in the show is excited because we all are good. Woo! Um, <laughs> I don't know how many other teenagers got on because I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, that's all I have today. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Follow my social media, my Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, and for the first time ever, my Snapchat will be in the description below. I spent like two hours on Snapchat last night posting the stupidest crap, so, uh, and it amused me a lot, and I was like, this is the kind of stuff I put on my YouTube channel, but I didn't want to dress up and do stuff, so I was just like, in my slouchy sweatshirt, and I figured, you know what? I'm going to share that piece of my life with you. Enjoy my Snapchat, friends. So my Snapchat will be below in the description along with my usual Instagram, Twitter, below, and Twitter. So go follow, like, comment, everything. Subscribe if you enjoyed, like my videos, watch more of my videos. I have like a bunch of other videos up. I'm working on organizing my channel so I have like a thing of tags, a thing of collabs, a thing, a thing, a thing, a thing. So if you want to find a particular kind of video that you think I, if I make it, it'll be organized and off you can go to watch all of them because if that's the type of video you like I have it go enjoy and that's all for today guys bye